So Sarepta proposed a new propension matrix analysis of study 101, 102, and 103. What does it mean? It means that, for instance, a study like 101 have no control groups, right? So you can compare these patients, for instance, with natural history study. But the patients from natural history study have not the same age, have not the same baseline. So you can use a technique that just allow a certain weight um, to patients from natural history study to match more properly the study group, right? And so the criteria to, to match were actually the age, the North Star at baseline, the time to rise from floor, and the faster climbing test at baseline, which is a good approach. Um, obviously, this allows to compare patients from the study with a more suitable control group, but there is a but. Of course, in the natural history study, nobody gives high dose of steroids all of a sudden to the patients. And the natural history study are sometimes patients who have been evaluated some years ago. And by the way, there was no matching for the type of steroids and for the duration of steroids treatment. So this is an interesting analysis. But anyway, at the end of the day, what we need is a double-blind randomized placebo control study. In the 102, uh, patients could be followed up for two years. In, um, in the 101, patients could be followed up for four years. And it seems that um, overall patients get a boost in the first year of treatment, after the treatment, and then are pretty stable afterwards. Of course, it's a limited number of patients, and we need to see this on a larger scale, but this is quite encouraging data. During this ICNMD, we had also um, an update about the, the data from um, SOLID, so the IGNITE trial that was presented by, by Dr. Perichier, which shows that um, the patients on a, on a two-year uh, period uh, presented a bare minimum of stability uh, on the main outcomes like the NOSTAR. The program is currently on hold for manufacturing reasons, uh, but these results go in the same direction than other results in the gene therapy field, which is that these patients, at least in a two years period, seems at the bare minimum stable or slightly improved by one point on the North Star. Clearly one of the most exciting parts of the um, conversation over the four days of the conference related to the uh, pilot studies in gene replacement therapy uh, and other types of gene therapy um, in the new neuromuscular diseases. Uh, with respect to Duchenne muscular dystrophy, um, as we all know, there are several uh, different scientific groups um, and companies around the world working to try to develop the very best um, type of uh, gene replacement uh, for dystrophin. This is very, very complicated because the dystrophin gene having 79 exons is uh, approximately three times larger uh, than the largest capacity for AAV viral vectors. Uh, to incorporate. So uh, the different companies have not only been trying to look at different promoters <clears throat> and some of them different viral vectors um, uh, within the um, AAV uh, uh, area, but, uh, but have also developed different types of truncated or micro dystrophin, um, including um, the most important parts, it's thought, um, to uh, produce uh, the best and most durable uh, dystrophin protein that can be done with something uh, less than the full dystrophin gene. Uh, a number of uh, companies have entered this arena with clinical trials. There are some clinical trials that Pfizer has done uh, in boys with uh, Duchenne um, in the four to seven or eight year old age range. Solid Biosciences has also um, initiated a trial and uh, is working um, uh, on initial uh, clinical trials in that regard. Uh, but the, uh, at present, the largest body of experience exists for um, a gene replacement uh, that was initially uh, developed at Ohio State University and which has now been commercialized by Sarepta for what is uh, being termed Delindistrogene Um 
And there were a number of presentations that gave updates on the uh, trials. And the first four boys in that first initial cohort are now five years post-dosing. And um, all of the uh, efficacy data up to four years post-dosing um, was analyzed um, in detail and presented. Um, of interest is that not only did the uh, boys uh, do much better than a comparison natural history for boys of their age with Duchenne, but the um, there was no loss of function over these four years, no deterioration. The concern uh, about that comes from the fact that by choice, uh, the gene, the type of gene uh, being used is one that um, does not in, um, incorporate into the human genome to minimize any concerns about um, oncogenesis or um, other side effects unwanted. Um, therefore, uh, as the muscle degrades in Duchenne um, because of the natural um, process with absent dystrophin, um, the body uh, replaces, regenerates and replaces those um, uh, damaged muscle cells. And um, eventually the concern is, uh, and the unknown question is whether the satellite cells that received the um, transgene will um, become depopulated and whether there will be um, an inability to continue that uh, repair and improvement. It's an unanswered question at this time, but we can at least say with the first boys being out to um, this report of four years and in clinical um, observation five years post-dosing, they're doing quite well with no decrease in their abilities.